everyone. In this video, we're going to learn to estimate optical flow using a deep neural network called RAFT, a recurrent all pairs field transforms for optical flow. So I'll link the paper in the bio. I also have a couple of articles that I've written that really break down RAFT and explain its inner workings of how it actually is able to estimate optical flow with such a high accuracy. But in this video, we're just going to learn how to use it in Python. So I'll go, I'll go over a brief notion of its architecture. So we have three main blocks, the feature encoder, the visual similarity, and the iterative update block. So first off, the feature encoder portion encodes features from frame one and frame two with a single convolutional neural network with weights shared across each frame. And the second one right here, the context encoder, encodes features from frame one. It actually encodes hidden features that seed this recurrent update block right here, and it encodes context features which are act as reference features for the network to learn the flow. So after we extract features, we actually compute a four-dimensional correlation volume that relates each pixel from frame one to all the pixels in frame two. And we then take an average pooling over the last two dimensions of that and stack it into a five-dimensional correlation pyramid that we can see right here. Then we have a lookup operator that extracts features from each correlation features from each layer of the pyramid and inputs them into this iterative update block. So this iterative update block, we have our lookup operator extracted correlation features, we have our context features, and we have our hidden features that seed the latent hidden state. This actually runs for a set amount of iterations where the hidden state is the actual flow estimate that goes into something called a flow head to re that uses convolutional layers to reshape it into the um, two-layer optical flow. One for the vert one one for the vertical displacement of all pixels and one for the horizontal displacement of all pixels. So if you're interested in learning more, I'll direct you to the articles I've written about this. Now let's get started with how to actually use this. So the first thing we need to do is we need to clone this code from the GitHub repository. And in this GitHub repository, we actually have a few different options. So Raft comes in a large large model and a small model. So every model here is going to be a large model, except for the small model. The main thing to note is which models, the, which data sets each model was trained on. We can see that Raft Sintel has been trained on four da data sets, including Kitty. And that's going to be the one that we're going to use today. So all these other ones are basically going to be models that we might want to fine tune on or train on. It's really up to your own experimenting. And then if we want a little bit faster performance with a sacrifice and accuracy, we can use RAF small. So let's go ahead and do our imports. So we're going to import torch <clears throat> and matplotlib to display stuff. Since we have downloaded RAF to our folder structure, we're actually going to add the core of Raft to our path right here. This will make our imports easier. And it turns out that Raft actually contains some frames, some demo frames from the Centel data set, which is just a synthetically generated data set. And I have displayed a couple here. We have frame 20 and frame 21. And this is what we're gonna compute the optical flow on. So now we need to download the models. It has a simple download script. I've already ran this, didn't mean to run it again, but it shouldn't be a problem. And so this part right here is going to actually enable us to interface with the Raft class. So this Raft class, it's able to, we're able to interface it readily from the command line. But if we want to actually call it in code, we're going to have to either rewrite some of it, or we're going to have to kind of spoof it and pass some arguments to it. So let's actually open up Ra the Raft code and see what exactly I'm talking about. So this is the Raft code from GitHub. We have our class right here. We have these special um, arguments right here. So we're going to actually pass these arguments in terms of a class. It's really expecting these arguments from more of a command line argument. And it just makes it easier to spoof it with the class. So that's why this args class right here is that's what this is for. So a couple of things we need to go over. So to process each image, we convert it to torch and get the dimensions right and put it on our device. We are going to only use a GPU for this, but thankfully we can easily access a GPU and collab. So to load the model, we're going to load the pre-trained weights from the weights path that we want. 
and we're going to put it on data parallel, load the state dict, put it on CUDA, and return the model with the writes loaded. This inference function is going to allow us to perform inference using whatever model we want. So we're going to put it to evaluate and use torch no grad so we don't do anything weird with the gradients. We're going to pre-process our frames, take them, and get torch tensors on our device. And this part right here, the pattern is very important. So in this pad mode right here, we have Sintel. So Raft requires every image to be divisible by eight, and that's what this pattern does. So if we go to the utils folder and go to utils.py, we could actually see that this input pattern has different modes, and we're gonna be able to adjust this mode based on our own images. And if we're gonna use our own test images, we need to update this thing right here or pre-process our images before we add them to Raft to make sure that they're divisible by eight. So in this test right here, so we have two different modes to run. We have test mode and regular. So right here, if we go to Raft, we can go to, go to its forward function and we can see that test mode returns the initial the initial flow plus the upsampled flow. So we're going to have the flow at the low re one eighth resolution and the flow that's been convexly upsampled. If we don't do test mode, we're going to get all the flow iterations for the specified number of iterations that we've made. Um, this get viz basically helps us is a quick function to help us visualize the flow. We'll see how to use it later. So that being said, let's kind of dive into this and see what I've been talking about. So the first thing, we're going to load our model. We have the path to the pre-trained model, and we pass our default args, which are going to be fine for any model except a small model. If we want to do a small model, we simply set small to true when we initialize the args. So right here, we can actually run the model, and we're going to do test mode, so we're going to get the 1 8th resolution plus the upsampled resolution. We're going to see the big difference that complex upsampling makes. So let's get these visualizations. And now we have an example of the upsampled resolution right here. And you can see it's a very clean flow. And that's because we have test images. They're synthetically generated and they're very easy to estimate. And they kind of, they're very good at gauging how well this model is performing. So right, right here, we have the 1 8th resolution flow and the convex upsampled flow. And notice the difference in, in how it looks. See how jagged these edges are. And we couldn't get this nice upsampling with regular bilinear upsampling. So convex upsampling sampling estimates each fine pixel as a convex combination <coughs> of its neighboring pixels. And you can see in the paper right here, let me find it real quick. Oh, it's in the appendix. So it basically takes each pixel inside a center pixel of the 1 8th resolution. It takes a this takes a small small pixel that it would this would be originally the fine pixel and takes this convex combination of all its neighboring pixels. So what that means it's basically a weighted sum where the weights are limited to the max value of one. And a neural network is used to parameterize these weights and it is able to learn the weights for all the pixels and actually perform very well across many data sets. So this next iteration, we're gonna see the difference between the first iteration and the final iteration with a set number of iterations. So we're gonna use 20 iterations and it actually converges pretty quickly since we're using a synthetic data set. So you can see this this first iteration that's already been upsampled, but this flow looks kind of blurry. There's not a very crisp boundary between these these um, objects right here. And in the final iteration, you can see these boundaries become very crisp and the motion becomes more well, more better defined. So we could also do a flow with a warm start and you actually can't really tell in here. So we're, we're gonna go and do this on Kitty. So the Kitty data set is a basically as driving sequences and you can see an example right here so these are the two frames that we're going to estimate this on so we were able to obtain this data by using a path that we that we put in here with the wget command then we jar xf it to unzip this to our location which is right here and i've so it's basically the default location that it will use 
and we're going to take all the images, get a random index, and we're going to estimate the flow on these. So right here, we have the first flow iteration and the final flow iteration, just like we saw above. It's going to be a little bit blurry on the first one and more crisp on the second one. So now let's look at the warm start. So this left image is with the zero initialized flow, and the last image is with the um, warm start initialized flow. And you can see that this actually does look a little bit more crisp, but not a very big difference. And one thing to note that when we want to do the warm initialized flow right here, we need to actually pass in the one eighth sampled flow for us to do that. We can't pass in the original resolution. So it's a little bit tedious and it doesn't seem like we get much of a benefit, but that's basically how you do it. Okay, so that's all for this one. Hope you're able to learn how to use Raft, and I'll see you in the next one.